morning, Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Nadler, Chairman Roy, and Ranking Member Scanlon, and members of the subcommittee. I'm here today with a deep sense of gratitude and humility. I appreciate the subcommittee taking the time to focus again on the importance of protecting reporter sources and the vital safeguards provided by the Press Act. As you know, in February, I was held in contempt of court for refusing to disclose my confidential sources on a national security story. I think my current situation can help put the importance of the Press Act into context. One of our children recently asked me if I would go to jail, if we would lose our house, and if we would lose our family savings to protect my reporting sources. I wanted to answer that in this United States where we say we value democracy and the role of a vibrant and free press, that it was impossible, but I could not offer that assurance. The Bipartisan Press Act, which came out of this House committee, would put an end to the sort of legal jeopardy that I have experienced firsthand in the federal courts. And without the legislation, more journalists will run the uncertainty of the contempt gauntlet in the future. This legislation will provide protections for every working journalist in the United States, now and for the next generation. The legislation provides strong protections at the federal level for reporters and their sources. It would block litigants and federal government from prying into a reporter's files, except when there's an imminent threat of violence, including terrorism and in defamation cases. At the state level, similar rules are already in place to protect press freedom. It is my sincere hope that the passage of the Press Act will provide similar protections at the federal level. I hope that I am the last journalist who has to spend two years in the federal courts fighting to protect my confidential sources. My current situation arises from a Privacy Act lawsuit. I am only a witness in the case. It is not common for these cases to reach the stage of holding a reporter in contempt, but when such cases happen, they have profound consequences, impacting every journalist in the United States. Forcing a reporter to disclose confidential sources would have a crippling effect on investigative journalism because without reliable assurances of confidentiality, sources will not come forward. The First Amendment provides protections for the press because an informed electorate is at the foundation of our democracy. If confidential forces are not protected, I fear investigative journalism is dead. Each day, I feel the weight of that responsibility. As you know, I was held in contempt of court for upholding the basic journalistic principle of maintaining the pledge of confidentiality to my sources. I have complete respect for the federal court and the judicial process, and I'm not here lit to litigate the case. It will play out before the appellate court in Washington, D.C. But the fact that I have been fighting in the courts for two years and that I am now facing potentially crippling fines of $800 a day to protect my reporting sources underscores the vital importance of the Press Act. When you go through major life events, as I have in recent weeks, losing your job, losing your company health insurance, having your reporting files seized by your former employer, and being held in contempt of court gives you clarity. The First Amendment, the protection of confidential sources, and a free press are my guiding principles. They are my North Star. When I was laid off in February, an incident reinforced in my mind the importance of protecting confidential sources. CBS News locked me out of the building and seized hundreds of pages of my reporting files, including confidential source information. Multiple sources said they were concerned that by working with me to expose government corruption and misconduct, they would be identified and exposed. I pushed back, and with the public support of my union, SAG-AFTRA, the records were returned. CBS's News's decision to seize my reporting records crossed a red line that I believe should never be crossed again by any media organization in the future. The litigation and being held in contempt have taken a toll on me and my career. This is not a battle you can fight alone. I am grateful for the support of fellow journalists and multiple First Amendment organizations, including the Reporters Committee for Press Freedom, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, the Coalition for Women in Journalism, 
the Knight First Amendment Institute, the Society of Professional Journalists, as well as the Columbia Journalism School, of which I am a graduate. I have also been fortunate to have the support from my former employer as I continue to fight this case. Not many journalists could count on a former employer, in this case Fox News, to support a costly and vigorous defense of the First Amendment. That is why the Press Act comes at the right time when independent journalism and news platforms are expanding opportunities for reporting diverse voices that strengthen our democracy. I know I join many journalists who are encouraged by the recent comments of the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who said he hopes to have the legislation through the Senate and on the President's desk this year. I deeply appreciate the committee's commitment to this legislation and holding this public hearing. Thank you.